Do you ever get confused by certain English words? Honestly, I do. It, it does. It happens to me. And I want to teach you the difference between some commonly confused words. And I, I hope that I have now persuaded you to watch this lesson or convinced you, persuaded you or convinced you. Hey everyone, my name is Wes from InteractiveEnglishVideos.com and this channel is all about helping you guys practice and improve your English skills. And today, I, I wanna help you build your vocabulary but also improve your overall English fluency because uh, we're going to look at specific words that may commonly confuse learners or maybe even some native speakers. So let's begin with these two words right here, achieve and accomplish. Now these words are similar, but they're also slightly different. So you could say that you want to achieve your goals or you want to accomplish your goals. In this case, both really mean that you have success. But if you're talking about achieve, it makes me think that you were really working hard and you wanted to, to really reach this level. You wanted to get there. You put a lot of time and energy into it. And therefore, you can be proud of the work that you've done and you have achieved your goals. I often talk to you guys about perhaps you want to achieve English fluency. You want to work hard, you want to, to reach that goal, achieve English fluency, and you could be very proud of that. You could also, uh, if you do a lot of tests or experiments, maybe you achieve positive results. Or perhaps you want to achieve financial security that later on in life you, you hope that you don't have to worry too much about money and you have financial security, but you need to work hard to get there to achieve financial security. Now, if we're talking about accomplish and you want to accomplish your goals, that's also talking about success. But in this case, it makes me think that, well, this, this thing is finished, it's completed, and you can move on to the next thing. You have accomplished your goals. Or something else you might accomplish would be a mission. The mission, it was a success and it is, it's done, it's finished, mission accomplished. Or perhaps you want to accomplish things in a period of time. This is a, a way that it's used if, for example, I could say, well, I had a lot of work to do this weekend, so, so I just stayed home and I accomplished a lot. That there were many things that I finished in this period of time. I accomplished a lot. Now, I'll continue to use these words as I tell you about the sponsor of today's lesson, which is Lingoda. And Lingoda is an online language school where you can study English, business English, Spanish, German, or French. It is a great way to learn a language and taking classes online is an excellent way to achieve English fluency. So there are many advantages learning with Lingoda. They have their own proven curriculum. You get to study with a native speaking teacher and these are small group classes with usually three to four students, which means you'll have plenty of opportunities to speak. Plus, because you are learning online, you don't have to travel. You can stay at home where it's a little more comfortable. And you can also take classes 24-7 and really organize the lessons around your schedule. And the prices are also very affordable, as low as eight euro per group class. I also studied with Lingoda. I took some classes in Spanish and I was able to practice a variety of different things because we discussed different topics and I could build my vocabulary. We did a bit of grammar and the teacher really helped with my pronunciation because yes, I have some trouble pronouncing different words and it really helped. So it, when I started out, I wanted to achieve different learning goals. And in the end, I was able to accomplish those goals. And I am confident that you can accomplish your learning goals as well. So if you're interested in taking some classes with Lingoda, just click on the link in the description and you can use the voucher code interactive 11 to get a 20 euro discount on all monthly subscription packages. And finally, I have some great news for those who really want to challenge themselves and take their English to the next level. Entries for the Lingoda Language Sprint have reopened. You now have until June 26 to sign up. So you can sign up for the Language Sprint, take three months of classes, and if you successfully complete it, then you may be eligible to get 100% cash back. I will leave a link down below in the description to uh, another lesson that I did giving a little bit more information about the language sprint so you can check that out. So let's get back to our lesson on commonly confused English words and the next set of words that I have for you is 
borrow and lend. So uh, a long time ago, about 10 years ago, I used to teach at a high school in rural Namibia. Shout out to Engejo Senior Secondary School. Miss you guys. <laughs> you guys, you can go check it out, Google it. Anyway, when, when I arrived there and I started teaching and I met many of the students, sometimes they would confuse these two words and they might ask me a question like, oh, could you please borrow me a pencil instead of saying, could you please lend me a pencil? Now, I think an easy way to remember the meaning of these two words is to think of it like this. When you, when you borrow something, you take it. When you lend something, you give it. So borrow is take, lend is give. And I think these words can be confusing because you can use them to say the same thing like I just did. Could I borrow a pencil is basically the same as could you lend me a pencil? It's just when I borrow, I take. You give, you lend. So you just gotta keep that in mind. And if I want to practice using these words again, I could say, the student borrowed a pencil from me. To borrow something from someone. You may follow this verb with that preposition from, borrow from. Or I could say, I lent a pencil to the student. You can follow that verb with the preposition to. You lend something to someone. So borrow is to take, lend is to give. Then we have the words convince and persuade. Now these, these words, they're very similar. They can often be used interchangeably because they both mean to, to get someone to do something. At the very beginning of this lesson, I said something like, I, I hope that I persuaded you to watch this lesson, which is very similar to, to me saying, I hope that I convinced you to watch this lesson. There is a slight difference, and that slight difference is, well, well, why? Why did you do, why did I get you to do this thing? So if I convinced you, then it's really talking about the, that I got you to firmly believe that something is true, that, that you will watch this lesson, you believe, you believe it's true, that it will help you, and I convinced you to watch this lesson. Or you could perhaps convince someone of another person's innocence. You believe that they are innocent, it is true, you convince them of their innocence, or you might, uh, a, a very common way that it's used is that you could convince someone to change their mind. Because before they, they thought one way, and now they, they think what you're saying is true, and you convince them to change their mind. If we're talking about persuade, it means you're, you're getting somebody to do something based on reasoning and argument. You're, you're telling them all these things so that they start thinking, okay, maybe this person is right. You are persuading this person. And perhaps I, I gave some really great reasons why you should watch this lesson. You can build your vocabulary, improve your fluency. And because of that, I persuaded you to watch this lesson. Or maybe you want, you want to borrow my car. You want to borrow it. And you try to persuade me to lend you my car. I'm going to throw these other words in here just to review. Now, if you give me a lot of good reasons and, and arguments, then you could say, yes, that, that you persuaded me to lend you my car. You persuaded me, but I don't think you will persuade me, not because I don't want to lend you my car, I just don't have a car. You can borrow a bike if you want. Then we have the words among and between, and these prepositions can be very confusing, but if you're talking about between, it refers to things that are separate, that are clearly separate from one another. Usually you're talking about two things, but, but not always. So for example, I could say, for dinner, I, I was trying to decide between pizza or pasta. Or if I wanna give you an example with more than two things, uh, perhaps I have a secret and I say, this secret is between you and me and everyone else watching this video lesson. So I listed three different things. They were clearly separate, you, me, and everyone else watching this video lesson, but I was able to use between because they were clearly separated. Now, if we're talking about among, then we're talking about things that are not clearly separated because they're part of a group. 
So for example, I think of uh, a statement that maybe you would hear in a, in a TV show or movie, somebody would say, there is a traitor among us, that in this group of people, there is a traitor. There's one person who's a traitor, there is a traitor among us. There's a traitor among us. Or perhaps um, <laughs> I'm teaching a class and, and then I have to leave the classroom and I tell the students, talk amongst yourselves. That, that you as a group, you can turn to each other and, and talk amongst yourselves. Now, you may be looking at this and thinking, wait, what's the difference between among and amongst? Just the spelling, the meaning, there is no difference in meaning. It's the same thing, except I think among is, is more common. Amongst is a, a bit older, but I think that you may often hear it when you use this statement right here, talk amongst yourselves, that you, you have to leave and you're telling this group of people, well, just, just talk to each other, talk amongst yourselves. Or I could give you another example and say, I teach English among other things. And that phrase right there, among other things means as well as other things. That's another common usage of, of this preposition, among. I teach English among other things. I'm not gonna tell you those things, but <laughs> I, do, I do teach English among other things. Then we have the words figuratively and literally. Now these words, well, I'll tell you in a little bit why they can be confusing, but let's, let's first talk about what they mean. If you say something figuratively, then you are, you're using words and phrases in a very imaginative way in order to really like, like emphasize a feeling, an emotion, an event. You're basically using metaphors. It's not real, it's not what happened. So let me give you an example. If I have a difficult day, I like to go out for a run. And when I go out for a run, the stress just washes away. Does the stress really wash away and just fall off my body? No. I am speaking figuratively. Or another example, I could say that, well, some, some situation, this is going to create a tidal wave of problems. Is it really a giant wave of problems that's gonna come and hit me? No, again, I'm speaking figuratively. But the reason why we do this is to really emphasize something. It makes our, our, our conversations or our writing a little more colorful, a bit more interesting. And I think it really helps you put a picture in your mind. So I think it's great if people are speaking and they use figurative language. Now, if we're talking about literally, this, this refers to something that actually happens. This is, this is the truth. This is what really happened. It's realistic. It, it, it's the exact speech. So for example, maybe I'm, I'm talking with my friend about someone else. And I saw that person yesterday and I tell them, oh, you know, I literally saw her yesterday. I'm then saying that this actually happened. Another example, every lesson, I always ask you guys, I say, oh, please go ahead, hit the like button. So I, I could then say every lesson, I literally ask you guys to hit the like button. This, this is what actually happens. Now, the, the one thing I want you to take notice of is that in those examples that I gave you, I used the word literally. And people will say this in order to, to emphasize what, that something actually happened. But that's also the reason why these, these words are commonly confused is because people will use literally when talking about figurative examples. So let me, let me tell you what I'm talking about. I could say something like, oh yeah, I saw the movie. I literally died of laughter. Now, if you die of laughter, that is speaking figuratively. I did not die from laughing, but it's a little confusing because I said I literally died of laughing as though it actually happened, but it really didn't. Or perhaps somebody could say, he was literally thrown under the bus. Now, to throw someone under the bus, that is an idiom that means to betray someone. So again, we're using literally, to talk about something that did not actually happen. This person did not actually get thrown under this bus. They're talking about being betrayed. So in those examples, I used literally more as a discourse marker to help organize ideas or, or express an emotion. The same way somebody would use words like um or anyway, well or like. 
So that is why these two words can be a bit confusing. It is because of that. People will use the word literally when they talk about something that is figurative. So listen for that because that is something you may hear people say from time to time. So I hope you are now convinced that this lesson was actually worth your time and that you understand the difference between these different sets of words. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm gonna go now. I am literally going to end the lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.